All right, good morning and welcome to The First Word. I am your host, Pastor Rashi Taylor, and I am here with my two very special friends. We'll introduce our lady first. Good morning, everybody. Dr. Jennifer Patterson. And my brother. Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor J.D. Miller. Pastor J.D. and Dr. J., I thank you for once again holding down the fort with me here on The First Word. And for those who are joining us for the first time, or for those who may have forgotten, here on The First Word, we practice what we call the SPACE acronym. That's right, the SPACE acronym. As we go through the Bible, we want you to look for S, a sin to confess, P, a promise to claim, A, an attitude to adopt or adjust, C, a command to obey, or E, an example to follow. So as we look here at preparing ourselves for God's mission, practice the SPACE acronym and use that to guide you through the Word of God and how you can make it practical, personal, and portable. And before we go into prayer, we just simply ask that you like, share, and subscribe. That way, somebody gets what you've been giving. That way, you can pass the Word of God along, and that way, you can bring about the second coming that much quicker. All right? Dr. J, can you give us a word of prayer, please? Absolutely. God, we just thank you for uh, just another time to get together and talk about your word and um, how we can apply it to our lives, its importance, um, its priority. Uh, and we just ask that your Holy Spirit just continue to give us insight and continue to guide us mm -hmm. as we talk. Um, guide our thoughts and uh, those who are listening and watching. Um, we thank you for what we will be able to walk away with. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So as we look at preparing for mission, uh, Jesus had a conversation with his disciples, preparing them for his death and resurrection and life thereafter. So yeah. what was some, some information that he gave them or what did he tell his followers? in uh, Luke 18. So let me just share a couple of verses. And um, okay. 31, Jesus took the 12 aside and he told them, we're going up to Jerusalem uh, and everything that is written by the prophets. I think that's key right there um, about the mm -hmm. son of man mm -hmm. will be fulfilled, will happen. Um, mm -hmm. And then he goes to break it down. Um, he will be delivered. Of course, Speaking about the prophets, he's talking about, you know, the Old Testament prophets who mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, prophesied his coming, his coming. Mm -hmm. And so he said he'll be delivered over to the Gentiles. They'll mock him, insult him, spit on him. They'll flog him and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. And um, it's not funny, but the Bible has jokes sometimes, I think. Because mm -hmm. the next verse is, the disciples did not understand any of this, right? <laughs> you know, right. It's meaning. It's almost like the narrator. It's meaning uh -huh. was hidden from them, and they did not know <laughs> what he was talking about. And depending on yeah. what version it is, it's just like, dang, you know? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you know, when we're reading it, it's almost just like, yo, he just literally said, the prophet spoke about me, and this is what they said. And they're just like, yeah. what? There's mm -hmm. a meme. Mm -hmm. There's a meme that you'll see on social yeah. media where somebody is telling somebody else something and they have like this whole look on their face because it's like they never heard yeah. it before. And they'll be like, yeah. the what? You know, they have that yeah. look on their face. Yeah. I can imagine that the disciples had this these blank look, these blank <laughs> looks on their face. Their uh -huh. faces. But essentially, Jesus was telling them, hey, it's already been told, it's already been foretold mm -hmm. that this was going to happen, that the Messiah was mm -hmm. going to come, he was going to be born, he was going to live, he was going to die, he was going to rise again. And so he's mm -hmm. just telling them just real succinctly, like, yo, mm -hmm. this is really happening. And they're a little confused about it. Yeah. Amen. About what he's talking about. Yeah. Even after all of that time, it wasn't, it, it wasn't clear to them. All right. It wasn't Thank clear. you so much. Yeah. It, it wasn't clear. Amen. So JD, um, continuing the Luke, or maybe you have a, a, a scriptural reference that you, you may want to point us to. How did the women respond after the, the resurrection, when they reached the empty tomb and they heard the message from the angels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, how the women yeah, responded. Right. No. <laughs> Let me stop. I figured, I figured you could relate. 
<laughs> listen, 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 listen. Why didn't you switch those questions around? You should give the first question. <laughs> listen, listen. You know, this, this, is, this is something, when you look at the story, you see mm -hmm. the excitement. Well, not so much the excitement, but you see them running to the tomb with, yes. with you know, the Sabbath is over. And they want to make sure yeah. that they, they do right by the Messiah. And so when yeah. they got yeah. to the... Uh, to the tomb, they saw that the tomb mm -hmm. was empty. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, I don't feel if you know if I go to the tomb of my loved one and they they're gone. Oh, mm -hmm. and the Bible says mm -hmm. that they were, were fearful. They were filled with fear in verse five. In the fight, in the flight, uh, the woman. Uh, I'm sorry, I went too far. Um, they were a little bit fearful. I think I, I thought I highlighted that. Mm -hmm. but, I guess I missed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were fearful, but they were respectful. They they bowed to the um bowed mm -hmm. in fright. They, they bowed. There you go. Um mm -hmm. so they, they bowed yeah. out, of, out of fear, but when they heard yeah. the message and they they it's like everything was Jen just talked about the 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 the, the, the narrator just you know um mm -hmm. narrator, yeah. you know, um they didn't understand, but it seems yeah. as if yeah. everything for these women at that moment, mm -hmm. yeah. it's ironic mm -hmm. that God chose them with the excitement. I don't know if you ever see the difference between a, a man being excited and a woman being excited. You know, when a man <laughs> oh. is excited, like, Whoa. oh yeah, please elaborate. Yes, please. So, so, okay, let me go away for myself. Away for myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Right. It's easy. I don't need really Chris Vine. So when I'm, when I'm excited, you know, I get loud. I really do get loud. When I get yeah, excited, man. I get really go ahead. Loud. I think I'm upset. Senior badge planning comments right. to J.D. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> no, ladies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you must know, when I get excited, I just get louder and louder and yeah. louder. Just, I'm naturally a quiet person, I think. We mm -hmm. don't agree with me. I'm pretty quiet. Yeah. Yeah. When I get excited? Yeah. 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 See, we it got so excited. It froze yeah. right here. It froze right on up. <laughs> <laughs> but it is hardy yelling real loud. He's, he's, he's yeah, he he was starting to get excited right there. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah all right, there all right. Like getting excited, the internet cuts off. <laughs> yeah, the technology could not take it. They couldn't take it. All it couldn't handle it. You too much power. Yeah. You came with that dude. <laughs> <laughs> When I get excited, I get excited. You know, I just mm -hmm. I get louder. Yeah. When my wife gets okay. excited, she just yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah. Just yeah. Thrill to the scene, okay. To burst, you know. So I can imagine mm -hmm. why the angels are mm. so these women to 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 get the message and run mm -hmm. with it and glee. They ran to the disciples. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was fear at first, but when the good news that Christ right. was um, was resurrected hit Come them, mm -hmm. Come on. and they all mm. came back, they, mm. they went running. They went running. Yeah. They, you know, it, yeah. It's so amazing when you read verse, uh, verse 8 9. They, then yes. they remembered his words. There they go. That then part. they mm. remembered his words. Come on. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the, uh, the 11. And to all the others, and so yes. the difference between um, them, I think, and the disciples. Mm -hmm. If you see the action, if you can be reading, you know they're like, "Oh, this is a woman," you know, mm -hmm. right? But they right, yeah. just mm, this full. They're filled with mm -hmm. they just can't contain mm -hmm. themselves. They're telling the disciples and telling the others, you know, so they're, just, mm -hmm. they're just you know just just blasting it because of the mm -hmm. excitement of the good news. Yeah. Christ mm -hmm. not only walked on the land, not only was crucified, but he is resurrected. Come on. Mercy. Yes. Yes. Mercy. So with this, with this, this huge uh excitement that they that they left the tomb with, and it said uh in the verse that JD just read, they ran and told the eleven and to all the others, just showing that 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 testimony couldn't be bound. Why were the disciples slow to believe the truths that were proclaimed by Jesus prior to this by the angels and even co-signed with the with the women's own two eyes. Why 
were they so slow to believe these truths uh, as you see it? Jen, um, and then JD. Yeah, this is such an interesting question. Um, and, <laughs> you know, my thinking is perhaps they did not internalize it during at the times that he talked to them about it. Maybe mm -hmm. they did not want that to happen. You know how sometimes mm -hmm. you, I, I don't receive that. Like I'm not receiving mm -hmm. that. I, I don't really want that yeah. to happen. So you don't really take it in. You're not really processing. Mm -hmm. You're not really, you know, it's not really becoming a part of your thought process. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think because they didn't really internalize it, it was just hard for them to be like, mm -hmm. oh, this really happened. Yeah. He did say this, but we're thinking that Israel is going to, he's going to help us to, to take, you know, take over Rome, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. Rome's going to be at our feet and we're going to be the head. Like mm -hmm. he's going to be the, you know, the king of this earthly kingdom. And, I, and, you know, and I'm not saying that they, all the time they spent with him, that that was their, their thought or their intent, but I That's just feel cool. like perhaps they did not really take it in mm -hmm. and really mm -hmm. take the time to be like, okay, Jesus said, we've, we've seen what he's done. We, we see that his words do come true. Why? Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it was just a hard truth for them to, to yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. JD, what do you think? You know, I, I, I thought about that question and, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. man, what, why, why didn't they? Yeah. It's, it's not mm -hmm. like they didn't see the, the miracles that he performed before, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's because the women brought the message. Um, mm -hmm. I think they had a, and, you know, I think they had a Thomas moment. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, mm -hmm. Pastor, Pastor Lee is going over the, um, the matters of the heart. And I think this is one of them. I think is the the fear that they were dealing with. They they just they just saw their their leader crucify the most mm -hmm. just yeah practical scene that could that that could take place at that time. You know, this ain't a movie. This is real life. You could smell the yeah. blood. You could smell Golgotha's Hill. You can yeah. see it. Mm -hmm. You know that mm -hmm. that, that that picture. Is yeah. still stuck in their their their, their, their minds, you know. So yeah. when the woman came running and telling the story, you know, again, fear is the first thing, the first that the first emotion that's blocking them. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and 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 maybe they thought to themselves, no, these these women are they 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 tripping because yeah, you know, there's <laughs> a mm -hmm. big thing. They they they're dealing mm -hmm. with something else. Yeah. <laughs> They're hallucinating. I mean, fear has gotten yeah. deep in this, you know. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. I think I think sometimes mm. when we are dealing with um, fear and and grief, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. grief plays tricks in our minds, and it doesn't Good. it doesn't arouse the the emotion of uh, of, of glee and happiness immediately because you're mm -hmm. still struggling with with grief and fear. That's good. Mm -hmm. struggle mm -hmm. thing. So when you hear the news, it's not that they had the, the first hand experience, they had mm -hmm. a second hand experience. And I mean, yeah. in fact, a third hand, because the woman had a second hand, they only saw the angels, right. they saw the, the missing right. body, and they believed immediately yeah. because they went through a task and the body was gone. And so mm -hmm. they experienced the angel. All the disciples' experience were uh, these women coming to tell them that mm -hmm. that Jesus. Uh, the body of Jesus is gone and he's resurrected, he's risen, you know. And mm -hmm. so, uh, grief and fear blocks mm -hmm. times um, our, our, our acceptance, yeah. um, or whatever mm -hmm. else that there is that we're dealing with at that moment blocks mm -hmm. acceptance. That's God. good, that's good, yeah. No, I, I, I love both of those answers, and uh, the only thing I'll add is, is just uh, you kind of touched on this in, in the beginning of your answer is this, this kind of skepticism that Thomas is famous for, mm. but the rest of them had to have some level of yeah. that. Um, and and it, it's, we talked about this last week, it's, it, it would be logical to see this, but as you, you pointed out, JD, if all of the other things were true and all of the other things yeah. that were impossible prior to him were now possible, why isn't this so? And maybe, maybe yeah. in that there, there's the confusion, like, okay, well, he raised Lazarus. Yeah. He raised the widow of Nain's son. Who yeah. raised him? Right. You know what I mean. So, and, and that's good. Died, that's good. And the way the way that they they last saw him, that seems highly unlikely, right? That somebody else could do what he did and get him 
out of the tomb. So maybe those those two things, skepticism, but also confusion about how and what mm -hmm. um, this would how would how this would come about and what what now would be required of them. Right. Because yeah. they they saw him fight the law and the law won. Right. So now what does this mean for me? Are people going to hunt us down? That's good. Um, are we in more danger because he's alive? He's already been killed. Is he, are we, all of these things I think are, 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 are at work, just like you guys said, the, the, the fear, the, the doubt, the lack of internalization. Um, mm -hmm. Those, yeah, working against them, even though this, this could have been possible, it was, they, they may see it as improbable. Even even as the women are testifying what they what they've seen, very good. Appreciate that. Can I can I say something too? Um, please please. When we have a lot of the stress hormone being released, stress mm -hmm. hormone blocks our ability to process mm. new information. Come on. So Come what on. you all are saying is so powerful mm -hmm. because neuro biologically. It's hard. Mm -hmm. it, it can't. It's hard for that new information to get in because that stress hormone is like trying to protect you, right? Mm. Because wow. you know, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of deep. So I see why mm -hmm. they could be slow. That you know, it it makes more you know even more sense why they mm -hmm. would be slow to be like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> like hold on, yeah. 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 Come on, okay. Nah, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 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 um. So the women heard this these this message from the angel as yeah. JD in his most empathetic and and sensitive way conveyed <laughs> that information. <laughs> so it's and they and they heard this and couldn't wait to tell it to not only those immediately close to them in the eleven, but they told it to all the others. So what might be some things that are holding us back from running forth and telling the good news that we serve a risen savior who is in the world today. JD, let's start with you. And then swing, swing back to Jim. Yeah, I, I think it's the same thing. I think really um, when we deal with emotions, mm. um, again, like I said earlier, it, it is not even a secondhand, uh, firsthand um, information um, that the women experience. Um, they heard it from somebody else, the angels that they didn't know. They knew mm -hmm. Jesus, but they, they recognized the angels. And so... Mm -hmm. It is now that the disciples are getting third hand. And here we are, mm. centuries of years, I mean, years later on. And yeah. we yeah. and we're still struggling with what is what is real. And, and you know, I, I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, because I know that there are people that struggle with this, and so I just I just play the um the angels advocate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, there are people that we sit beside, preach to, um, mm. listen to preach, that's still struggling with the yeah. reality of, yeah. of, mm -hmm. of you know this good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that's 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 the real. Mm -hmm. That is the real. Yeah. And so yeah. there's fear that comes along because when I prayed and mama still died, um, how do I mm -hmm. bring this good news? I'm still lacking that strong trust because um, um, auntie over here um, prayed as well and his son, her son still got locked up and, you know, we can go mm -hmm. on throughout the list of things that happens, you know, but the, 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 that's those are things that that really hold us from really um, uh, um, you know, really sharing our gospel. And then you mm -hmm. have science that comes along and, and science puts mm -hmm. out and that, you know, here we are with you now with Christians who believe this one thing and science is knocking, yep. it, knocking it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you, know, you have to go, mm -hmm. you know, you know it's, it's, it's religion versus science. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and those who are educated uh, would lean towards science you know because yeah. for them you know and so all these are a, a mix a mixed bag of of reasons why mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah right. for sure yeah Jim, what about you yeah you know and so i'm thinking from the perspective of you know someone saying well i'm not a preacher well i you know i'm not trained um mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to share. 
Um, mm-hmm. What are they going to say? What are they mm-hmm. going to think of mm-hmm. me? You know, yeah. um, is it going to am I going to be accepted or rejected? So I think that that those are some other blocks, right? Mm-hmm. We feel like we're not qualified. So I think that that definitely holds it. That's a, I think that's a, a big one that holds us back. We don't feel mm-hmm. qualified. Um, I don't know who's my audience. You know what I mean? We get real, mm-hmm. you know, we can get real mm-hmm. specific and pick this thing apart and figure mm-hmm. out why I can't share, but because we, what other, what else holds us back? We box ourselves into what sharing looks like. Right. Sh- sharing mm. is, is largely I not like. preaching a sermon. It's largely mm-hmm. not in didactic. It's largely not, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. you living out, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, Christ in yeah. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's how you treat people. It's walking with people, it's listening, it's having compassion, it's meeting needs. That is mm-hmm. also the good, and that opens the door to conversations. Yeah. You know, that, like that will take place authentically, you know? Oh. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something that we all have the capacity to do because we all have a sphere of influence, even if it's two That's people. Right. That's right. You know, That's right. so. I love, yeah. I, I love that too. Um, uh, Jen, and you, you kind of touched on that. And, and, and one thing I, I, we talked about, it wasn't the message for the disciples wasn't internalized. And I think for us, it's not internalized. It's not personalized. So we may have head knowledge, but we don't have the heart yeah. knowledge That's and the good. desire That's right. to give that to somebody else. And a lot Ooh. of times, even if we have this desire, we have this, this thing that I know what God can do and will do but I still have this issue. And the people that I know in my sphere of influence know that I have this issue. They know that I'm struggling with this. And so they may call me on what can be perceived as uh, hypocrisy, right? And so we kind of hold ourselves back because we're not not the preacher. We're not the one with the Bible knowledge as we see it. We're not the one that that has the right way to say it. So it's not personal, uh, maybe enough for us. It's not internal enough for us. Maybe it's not uh, it's it's a, a personal issue that we're wrestling with that we don't want to be exposed or be called on. So we just kind of sit back and 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 avoid those opportunities to give the gift that keeps on giving. JD, you were going to say something. No, I, no, I was going to say, you know, sometimes we've been we 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 get so force fed and we we told, and I, I'm really going off of what Jen said. We we've been told these mm-hmm. are the things, the steps to 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 be a good. Um, evangelist right. and uh, that's mm-hmm. that's good and all but the authentic way of doing it is be who you are yeah you know mm-hmm. you, can't, mm-hmm. you can't you cannot be that we yeah. can create um and i'm like i might i might get in trouble for saying this but we can may create uh things like um uh friendship evangelism it sounds good but that's a method it's like you know you know when people call you and you know you haven't heard from the long in a long time, and they mm-hmm. they call you say, "Hey, JD, how you doing?" Man? Hey, how you doing? You get excited, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they break out, man. Um, you know, I have this product that I'm selling. Right. That's how it comes off, right? You see what I'm saying? And they're giving you Amway. And I'm, I'm not not good. Of course, you know, of course, yeah, so, you know, yeah. They, they give you Amway and all that stuff, and it's like, it's like <laughs> yes. Yeah. Someone just popped your balloon, you know, because it's not mm-hmm. authentic. Mm-hmm. You want something from you. Right. And I think right. that what, when we do that, what happens mm-hmm. is it fizzles away. That relationship fizzles just quickly as it came and fizzles mm-hmm. away. Wow. Because mm-hmm. it's, not authentic. it's not authentic. So I yeah. love that. That gave me something. You just gave me something. Yeah. yeah. That's a great. Example. Nah. But mm-hmm. that, uh, that approach, as you outlined it, JD, is not about them, it's about us. We're not right. mingling for their good. We're mingling right. to check a box. We're mingling to recruit wow. for this team that we feel like we've joined. But their need is not front and center of the conversation, right? right. Because right. if it right. was, you wouldn't start with, well, I called to tell you, mm. right? You, you, would, you, would, you, would, you would handle it another way. You would call. Right. And, and one, of my, one of my students came to me yesterday. He's like, I really need to talk to you. And then he, I, he came to my class today and I was like, bro, why you didn't come up? He's like, I figured you was going to tell me that everybody else 
was going to tell me. Mm-hmm. So I just figured we might as well not talk. He figured I was just going to force feed him what all of the other people at the school had force fed him. And I tried to reassure him. He still didn't come. He hasn't come back yet. But it still was, no, man, I need to hear from you. Yes. If yeah. you tell me you need to talk, it's not about me talking. It's not about me. It's about me listening, right? And so when we do this, if we're going to if we're going to even call it friendship evangelism, it's meeting their needs, which we'll get into later. It's meeting their needs, meeting them where they are, and let God give the direction. Not right. not me come there and say, "Hey, you know what set me up? All right, this is this is what you need to do." No, that's not what it's about. Mercy. Yeah. So so I appreciate you taking us down that road, JD, because I think that does need to be. Need to be made clear. And speaking of roads, uh, let's talk about the road to Emmaus, where Jesus, after the resurrection, uh, was was walking and talking with some gentlemen who didn't understand who he was necessarily. Um, so, what prophecies might he have shared with these men on the road to Emmaus, Jen? <laughs> it's the same prophecy. The prophecy that the Messiah was going yeah. to come live mm-hmm. by be resurrected and return Mm -hmm. to heaven like it's the same he's like he's like bros Uh (laughs) didn't you did you not read are you not aware did you not read you Uh know what i mean and it's almost like he's you know rushi Mm -hmm. you teach you know how it is when there's something that you've taught and retaught and Mm -hmm. retaught and exposed to the students too multiple times but they're still like drawing blanks yes exactly <laughs> you know what i'm saying and you're like you, you didn't say say this to us yeah <laughs> they're like acting brand new as if that's the first time they heard it jason yes, you know yes. you got kids when they be Come acting on. like mm-hmm. you know i told you this like 10 times like don't mm-hmm. why are you yeah, acting yeah. brand new like this is the first time you're hearing it mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. i i imagine the impact like they witnessed this they like jd was saying they Mm -hmm. witnessed him being killed on the cross and i imagine that was just really like emotionally draining uh they were confused but listen Mm -hmm. but the prophecy still stood yeah that's good like yeah yeah so he's just he's just re reiterating you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this was already foretold guys (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. no i love that because in that is so it's 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 powerful in its simplicity, right? He just he just took them to back to the word. He did. took them back what he already told them. He didn't reinvent the wheel. He didn't walk on water like, hey, see, you know, he just he just took them it's back me. to the word. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I I love that. Uh, yeah. So so speaking of of drawing from the the word uh, specifically the Old Testament in his in his uh, situation. Um, how does he how has Christ kind of used the Old Testament to reveal himself to you over the course of your life, over the course of the, the last few months, weeks or years? Um, and then how does that impact how you connect with other people as well? Either either you question. Uh, J.D., go ahead. Um, you know, I, I thought about Genesis uh, chapter three. Um, it is. It is one of those. It's one of those verses. Uh, one of those uh, chapters mm-hmm. that that really, you know, it, you really look into it. It really it, it does mm-hmm. something to you. It, it, mm-hmm. it does something mm-hmm. to your spirit because, you know, here it is that that you know these two individuals were walking and talking with God and mm-hmm. and yeah. then you know, the snake comes in. Um, oh. And 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 tells them a lie. They believe the lie, and here it is now that Jesus goes hunting. Oh no, um, God goes hunting for them. God makes the first sacrifice and clothes them. And in that moment that He does that, um, He's telling us a whole lot that mm-hmm. the, the, the 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 skin of goats and lamb and calves. All these things that we use as sacrifice will not be it. Yeah. It will be mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. It will be me. Um, you know, and the one mistake that they made um, is the one mistake that caused him his entire, um, you know, his entire 
uh, not to say in time, but his his time here on earth, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. his death on the cross. And so it, it, it not only just does it show me um, the love, but it also going back to Genesis, it says you know he'll you know the, the serpent Satan will you know mm -hmm. attack me and hit my heel, but I will um, defend and I will crush its head. You yeah. know, meaning that you know it, 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 he tastes the, 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 the sting of death, but death was mm -hmm. the that that's not it for him it is not the thing death cannot overcome him death cannot conquer him mm -hmm. only for mm -hmm. a moment mm -hmm. allow death to do his thing but i'm going to be resurrected on the third day so i mean it, when you think about genesis uh, um and you just line it up to the cross you realize and god made a way for us um and so the gospel becomes you know yeah even better i was going to say gooder but even, gooder. Gooder. even gooder, even gooder, even right, gooder, right. And gooder. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it, it becomes gooder, yeah, better. <laughs> yeah, some of the yeah, ways that, yeah, I, I, there's so many things, right? But one of the things that stands out to me the most about how Jesus reveals himself in the Old Testament and how personal that is, um, like he'll pop back in here, he'll pop back in here, um is in the fact that God sees me. Um, how do I know? Because, and that God is personal, right? In this, how do I know? Because he shows up personally to Hagar, mm -hmm. a person who is basically insignificant, who's being mm -hmm. used. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He shows up, he, he goes down himself and speaks to her, right? right? He shows yeah, up yeah, yeah. personally to Joshua, you know what I'm right. saying? And Joshua sees the mighty warrior. He shows up personally to Daniel when Daniel's going through and Daniel's trying to, yeah. he's trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He shows, he continues to show up and it just reminds me that he sees me because in that moment when I need him the most, he mm -hmm. comes through in a way where I can personally receive that and so how does that impact my testimony i can share i can share that story with someone who may be struggling with is god real um i know he's or i know he's out there does he care about me does he see me um do i have value in his sight and so you know there are other um there are other you know revelations for me but you know we'd be here all day <laughs> I would be here all it's day. Just, it's funny, and I, I'm going back to the Genesis. I mean, there there's several for me as well, but Genesis. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. It is. It is. You know, when somebody gives you a good gift, and they, you know, it's like they they just smack you in the face because uh, it, those things bother me. You know, when you give a good <laughs> gift, and they're like, you know, I don't want your gift. You know, um, it it it, it wow. is what happened in the garden, and and I think that's what happens. Even today, with with us, with me, God gives mm -hmm. us a great gift—the gift of health, the, 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 I mean, no, healthy food, the, the gift of, yeah. um, of water, and and all these things. And we like, oh, we don't want that stuff. I'm gonna just sit here and just chill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exercise. I'm oh, gonna do anything. Oh, mercy! We, we, we take advantage of mm. that. But but even more, um, you know, how it affects me is that I get excited. Because okay. I know that in my worst time, in, in, yeah. in the worst and thick of things, yeah. that he, you know, he covers me not with not with um, the 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 the, 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 the um, sacrifice of animals, but he covers me, mm. his blood, yeah, that, covers. yeah, so that makes um, that makes me excited. Absolutely, yeah. I think another way. Um, that he reveals himself to me is, and I know it says Old Testament, but you know, throughout his whole word, like the Old Testament, and the New Testament, is the fact that I have purpose. I've been created with purpose. Like I see, you know, Jesus revealing himself through um, countless biblical characters um, mm -hmm. and what he designed them for and, and right. him empowering right. them, you know, to to carry that out. And I think that's another way to testify to others or other, other ways, you know, other things to talk about or to 
um, reveal the living Christ is helping people understand that you were created with a purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and here's some examples of that, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think these give us some, uh, some pathways, some create some bridges to, cause I think, I think mm -hmm. legit, some people are just like, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like how, mm -hmm. how do I navigate this? So I'm not, I'm not saying that it's easy y'all, you know, mm -hmm. It comes easy for some people, and but what about the people who are more introverted, who are who are more mm -hmm. they they're thinkers and analyzers, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. depending on our personality traits. Like, mm -hmm. but I think this question is so powerful because when I, I think Rashid, you alluded to that. When I personalize it, when yeah. I internalize it, when I'm connected to it, mm -hmm. somehow it comes out on its right. own. You know, right. Right. No, and I, I I love that because that's what those Old Testament stories do for me. And um, at my best as a as a communicator of the gospel is mm -hmm. all I'm doing is running down the resume of God's faithfulness in my life. Right. Come so on. I remember um, not only the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because it's been rehearsed throughout scripture, but it's yeah. that's what 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 my mind is drawn to. Oh, yeah. how he, he took a a 90 year old woman and a hundred year old man and Come he on. created life in, in a womb that should have been shriveled up. And, and he brought them back together when they were in the same tent, but they separated themselves, how he showed up in the fiery furnace and all these other stories. And so if God's profession of, of faith toward us is true, that he's not a respecter of person, then I can trust that when my fiery furnace season comes, he'll be there. When the storms of my life come, and I feel as if I'm going to die, and I'm I'm, I'm saying, don't you care that, that we're about to die? And and I and and yet and still he's right there, and he's calm and peaceful. I can rely on that. So yes, it yes. just becomes now not me telling somebody what I've read, but it's where he's come when my dad was battling cancer, where he's been when my mother was sick, where he's been when when my children were driving me crazy, and 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 all of those other things. He's yes. been faithful. I'm yes. just rehearsing his resume and that's all I can, that's all I need is to share what God has done for me. Now it's personal. Now I can make him relevant and real to somebody else. Mercy. So uh, Mercy. Yeah. thank y'all for holding it down when, when I was translated. Um, I, mean, I am now back. Wow. Let me not say that a lot. <laughs> I, I, you gotta sit back. You gotta sit back. Right, right, right. I was, not, I, was, uh, I was not. I was not yet ready. You know, <laughs> starting right here. <laughs> so, but but how can our our daily routine um kind of support uh those words? How can how can it like bring back? those those things that we've read and 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 you kind of you kind of might maybe if you want to feel like you've answered that already jen that's fine but how can we kind of put this into practice where it's really it's really personal on a daily basis um when i was in any of the programs that i enrolled in i became mm -hmm. immersed in that content mm. that became what i talked what i breathed mm -hmm. Um, when I was writing dissertation, that was yeah. everything that was constantly rolling okay. around. That was the effort and the energy that I put to that mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. I had a, I had a, um, an outcome. There was, a, there was a particular outcome that I was shooting for and I understood mm -hmm. the, the level of dedication and commitment that I needed to apply to that. I think right. that that's, we're challenged mm -hmm. because a lot of times I'm just going to say it when it comes to getting in the word when it comes to mm. intentional you know mm -hmm. grow intentionally uh, uh uh engaging in activities that is going to you know i had to read i had to do research i had to i had mm -hmm. to do the things mm -hmm. that was going to give me what i needed to write about and so i think sometimes we think you know the sermon on the weekend is going that's mm. going to carry me through. You, you wouldn't eat one yeah. meal on monday and expect that to carry yeah. you through the rest of the week you got to mm -hmm. eat every mm -hmm. day so i that's feel right. like it's a it's an intention that we have mm -hmm. to begin to practice 
It's a discipline yeah. that we have to get to practice. And that yeah. is the daily routine that I see. What are okay. the things that the, the spirit is guiding me that's going to enrich mm -hmm. me, that's going to actually give me something to give somebody, to share with somebody ooh, else? Ooh, Am ooh, I trying to go. pour from an empty cup? You know, garbage in, garbage out. What am I putting on the inside? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, you know, we cut ourselves off at the knees because of what we do yeah. or what we don't do in terms of our, mm -hmm. our, our engagement and our, in the discipline that we have or we wow. don't, <laughs> wow. you know? Yeah. Which, which is at the heart of discipleship, right? A uh, disciple without discipline is, is just a rogue student. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, you, you ain't got no, what you doing? Like, what, why are you here? Yeah. No direction, right. Yeah, 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 it reminds me of those people who, uh, <laughs> and, I, and, 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 and I, I may have known uh, several of these in my, in my youth, but those people who watch karate movies and then felt like they, they, could, do, they could do karate just because they saw it. That's, right. what it. that's what it is. Not under any direction of a sensei or any, any teacher of the art. They're just watching kung fu movies and then going into their front yard or their backyard, believing that they have now mastered it. That's 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 what I imagine. As and you hurt were themselves, that out. <laughs> and hurt themselves, or somebody else. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which is a word in and of itself, right? Hey, <laughs> Daisy, what you got? Oh, you know, I was one of the kids that. Uh... <laughs> Like, come on, come on, come on. With, with a serious face. I thought it was Bruce Lee, Roy. Oh, you know? No judgment, no judgment. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 think that, I think that it's funny you say that. It's funny you brought it up. It is, it, mm. it is a daily practice. Mm. It is a daily practice. It is a daily mm -hmm. speaking. Yeah. It's a daily um, uh, chasing after. Come on. Um, mm -hmm. that, that does it, you know. It is, uh, as Jen said, is you know we sometimes we struggle with reading the word, but but we have to we have to chase after him. And, and again, I'm I'm always saying it's controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Yeah, I think that one of the things I learned, I you know spent some time in Korea. One of the things I learned um, in Korea was uh, they take time to go into the forest. Mm. Mm. Time mm. steal away. They sometimes have church in the in the in the in the in the forest. Yeah. Um okay. because we locked in, we lock ourselves in, and all we know is just that locked and cooped up area, and mm -hmm. that's the only mm -hmm. place for us. But they take the, the time, you know, after church, they you know, they they take their shoes off and go walking in the forest. Now it is a culture mm. that is on the outside and where right. uh, is on the inside. But when they go into the forest, they take their shoes off and they become, you know, they feel as if they can become one uh, with uh, nature and realize, not, not, not in a Buddhist way, but in the right. sense that they, they're acknowledging that they are created as well. They're a creation mm. of God as well. Mm. All of nature is, uh, is, is praising um, mm -hmm. uh, the creator. So will I. No. Come on, yeah. come yeah. on. So, 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 I think you know we have to, we have to remember our surrounding. Mm, okay. In our, in our, in our already made um, coffin, the house, but mm -hmm. we have to, mm. our little coffin. Maybe I should say it that way. But we need to go out, <laughs> yeah, into, into the world and and yeah. experience the creation of, of our, mm. our, our Father. Amen. Yeah, I, mean, I, like I appreciate it. that. Yeah, I, I do too. I do too. So, so um, as we we talk about going forth, and 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 I think our own personal experience is necessary, our own personal encounters, and doing what is necessary to kind of ensure those encounters, right? Like uh, taking off the shackles that may that may inhibit um, those those things. But Christ has displayed this this patience after being full, after being being um uh one with the father and all that he he when he would have these encounters with the disciples they had to be frustrating because of their level of unbelief and their lack of understanding how can we be that patient as we try to go forth how can we be that deliberate and and and, and intentional even though we may run into the headaches and the heartaches that are just attached by, by trying to reach people uh both near and far jim what uh what do, what do you think yeah i'm straight i'm going straight into the classroom 
Um, mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to teach um, developmental reading um, okay. at the college level. Mm -hmm. And I had just a variety of, of ages, anywhere from right out of high school to been out of school 30 years. Mm -hmm. So when we say developmental reading, we're talking about basic reading skills for adults. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So the first thing was, I'm not expecting you coming here to, and knowing everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm expecting to take time. I'm expecting mm -hmm. you to struggle with some things until you get it. See? Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for that because it's a developmental mm -hmm. course. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yes, I do. You, you're not coming in here like, you know, you got everything on lock. So my mm -hmm. understanding, my intention is to walk with you if we got to go over it. And, and also I had to teach in a way where the content was broken down into bite-sized pieces, mm -hmm. manageable mm -hmm. pieces that they could take in, digest, uh, uh, practice it, master it, right? So it's mm -hmm. uh, our, our purpose is for you to, let's, let's grow together. Mm. Let's grow together. And I don't know mm -hmm. everything, so I'm not here as the expert. I'm right, here right. help walking with you and, mm -hmm. and being that, you know, facilitating that learning environment for you, that growing environment for you, that mm -hmm. safe environment. So I think we have to, we can't come into it like you, you finna get all this information. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. let me, let me just dump this on you. You, you don't get that yet. You don't understand. That's right. you, you don't understand. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's developmental and that's how the Holy Spirit works with us. It's developmental for me too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I love that because as part of your assignment, you knew who you were going to. Yeah. You knew yeah. what they were, what they they were coming in the room with, and you yes. knew what was against them. Yes. But more importantly, you knew where you were desiring to go with them, and you were intentional, intentional yes. about going at a pace that Absolutely. suits them best. That's Absolutely. awesome. That's awesome. Somebody. Somebody just got set free because you don't have to push, pull, and drag to you get don't. people to the gospel. You don't. That's beautiful. I love that, dude. Uh, JD, what about you? Uh, just simply this: this is it's not your mission. Um, the mm. moment you remember that, then that 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 also is liberation. Um, it's not mm. your mission. <laughs> um, the word <laughs> and the one that gives a word is yeah. what we need to pay. So, Ooh, so you mm -hmm. can't go and tell. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't tell if you've not been told. Um, mm -hmm. mm. What is going on? You have to be. Oh, you have to be stopped long enough that's to it. hear what the, 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 the one who is sending the message. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. And the moment you hear that, then you can go. You know. So yeah, the, the moment you can't go to mission without hearing the word from the master himself. Wow. That's that's I, I I love both of those. Thank you, and I, I think the 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 same thing is it has to be an inter uh in, following along that same line. It has to be an interpersonal relationship, an interpersonal relationship with you and you and Christ. You are a joined at the hip. You are aligned in completing His mission via His vision that's according right. to His word and His that's way. Right. But also the intention, the per, the the purpose of the relationship is that that person is getting what they need. And you're there to service it. That's right. right. So the person who who yes. delivers my meal at the restaurant, it's not his plate. It's not his food. Come it's on. not his order. He's just there to deliver to me what yeah. I asked for. And he didn't make it. The chef already cooked it up according to the recipe on. of what <laughs> I need. And so he was just the middleman. In the same way, at these yes. Bible studies, at these sermons, at these classes, I am just, we are just the middleman delivering what was already cooked up to a person who had an order mm -hmm. in to the chef that I was just used to feel. So I can't take it personal. I have to take it spiritual and I have to go at a way that God knows is best for that individual. Thank man. Y'all, 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 y'all dropped some jewels there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be uh, attached to you two brilliant people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
So Jen, Jesus leaves and he promises the Holy Spirit is coming, but he asks the disciples to wait or commands them to wait or tells them to wait. What did they do while they were waiting on this promised blessing? Yeah, they were together. Mm. They were mm -hmm. together. They're praying. They're fellowshipping together. They're eating together. They were, uh, they were just, they were together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> they, they were together. There's a joke um, that you all probably have heard, you know, what kind of car did the, the, the apostles drive? Uh-uh. A Honda. Because the, the word says they were all in one accord. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were together. They were on one accord. They were together. They were yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's intentional. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I was not sure that you all would have heard that one. I'm, not sure. no, I'm I, so excited. I, about you, it. And, and it was sad as I had, but I didn't even catch it until you got to, they were all in one. I'm like, oh, accord. Yes, but no, perfect, perfect. Cheesy, perfect cheesy joke to drive the point home is that they were all together waiting yes. on the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Same intention, intention mm -hmm. on scene. Finally, y'all, I think they finally got it. We're going to listen to what he says. <laughs> exactly. We're going to listen this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, JD, uh, real, really quickly, how was this, this, this promise confirmed? How did they know that they had got the blessing? Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that the whole ghost fell upon them like tons of fire. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it is it is it is that point when the Holy Spirit comes down into you upon you. Um mm -hmm. there's a change. There's a there is a change that 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 causes you to jump up and start preaching in different tongues. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> come on. Oh. preaching, you know. Mm. I mean, it, it's like it, he got fire shop in his bones. He had the Jeremiah yeah. experience. Yeah. You know, right. You know, I don't know if he wanted to, but he sure enough I did it because mm -hmm. his desire is to see his friend, his master, his teacher, mm -hmm. yeah. his savior once again. So he just, you know, Peter jumped up and, you know, I can hear the choir behind him. Go on, Peter. Preach, Peter. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Peter. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, I can, you know, my imagination goes crazy, but you know, they're not just sitting there because they, when they when they when people start responding, it's y'all. Yeah. It's not just mm -hmm. Peter; it's That's you right. all. So yeah, you know, yeah, they're on one accord, they're in one accord. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. they were in the accord. <laughs> so they were, they, they, yeah. accord. <laughs> they, were in, they were in the accord. Exactly, um, exactly. <laughs> they're in the accord. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, it, it is the Holy Ghost falling on us. That's, That's what, what, yeah. what, what does it for us. Yeah. So, um, uh, and this, this will probably be our last, our last question. How can we wait um, and not lose faith in the waiting? How can we, like, occupy our time as the disciples did, but not lose, lose, lose faith in the process? Yeah. Jim, what you think? Okay, so I think a couple of practical ways about mm -hmm. keeping the faith in um, community, the right community mm -hmm. um, really helps with that. Mm -hmm. Like not, not going it alone mm -hmm. is really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Sharing. So I know we didn't get to talk about the, the, the Acts Church, um, but mm -hmm. one thing that perpetuated its growth. Uh, it yeah. grew like wildfire is because they were together. Um, mm -hmm. They were eating together. They were worshiping together. They were living together. Mm -hmm. They were providing for each other's needs. They were together, good, bad, and ugly. Mm -hmm. They were together. And so I, I am a witness of when you are able to identify people around you who add mm -hmm. value to your experience in your life and you're able to add value to their experience in life, it really enriches, it, it helps with the, with the lows. Because I know with my, with like, with my girlfriends, we're not all low at the same time. Yeah. If somebody's low, then the other, the other one is, is not. And so the other one mm -hmm. is the one who can help, you know what I mean? Or, or, or mm -hmm. when I'm, I'm not low and then someone is, it's just like, we're able to, you know, that iron sharpens iron, all of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that asking God, if you don't have 
um, that community, asking God to open your mm-hmm. eyes to give you wisdom and discernment and, uh, you know, connecting with, with mm-hmm. good community that's going to help you, um, that's going to mm-hmm. walk with you, that's going to do life with you because it just really helps because we're all going to, we we, we're all going to go through stuff. You know, right. it's always, it's going to be highs and lows. Um, mm-hmm. But I would also say, um, I would challenge us to be intentional. Be intentional mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. you know, your spiritual disciplines, like about prayer, about reading the Bible, about meditating. Yeah. JD was talking about mm-hmm. going out in nature, about that time, you know, spending time, mm-hmm. you know, in quiet and listening. Um, I challenge us to do that because when you start doing that, you know, the Holy Spirit really starts opening stuff up and you're just like, whoa, I, I didn't see that before. Oh. I didn't hear mm-hmm. that before, mm-hmm. you know, so it mm-hmm. becomes a, um, an amazing way to be like, OK, I'm seeing God more. I'm hearing God more. Things are going to be OK. You know what I mean? When, when you're going yeah. through those tough times. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. J.D.? I, I think I agree. I know I agree with with with. The yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, it's waiting. Don't rely on your pastor. Mm. Uh, for for the, the the food, there you go. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to learn to read for yourself. Develop your own little community because your pastor won't be there when you're going through it. Your pastor mm-hmm. has over, um, you know, what how how big the church is? Thirty, ten mm-hmm. um, thousand mm-hmm. members mm-hmm. that he or she has to deal with. So you cannot rely <clears throat> you cannot rely on the pastor. You cannot mm-hmm. rely on on, uh, on your conference, you can't rely on conference president. You know you've got to learn to rely on Jesus. Come on, you got to learn to seek Him first. Um, you, we got to learn how to knock on His door. We got to learn how to to. He's Daddy. He's Come Daddy. On. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. is a, he's wide awake, waiting for you to say something to him. So yeah, mm-hmm. the, the way we do that is really um, that's how we wait. We wait. Mm-hmm. of we wait. Yes. Knowing that something's going to happen. We wait um, pleading. We wait yes. sharing. We, we wait um, uh, hoping. That's how we wait. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love that. And uh, I'll just add, you know, of course, the, the, the cliche answer is trust in the Lord. But um, just to add uh, a bit to that is that if he saves you, he's still listening to you. Come on. Right. It's, 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 he didn't pull you out of the fiery furnace. He didn't rescue you to then abandon you. So while you're waiting, trust that he is still listening to you. Trust that he still hears you. We've seen this time and time again. The, the children of Israel and Egypt, he, you know, I, I have heard their cries. The people in Sodom, I'm going down there to judge them because I have heard these accusations against them. So yes. God is always listening, even if he's not speaking where you can hear him. He is always listening. And so trust and believe that the God that saved you is the God that is still listening to you. And and uh, and those cries are understood by him in a way that's beyond mm-hmm. our comprehension. Um, my my children, my, especially with my first son, his cry kind of drove me crazy because I didn't know what to meet. But my wife had this this tune to his ear. I mean, yeah. her ear tuned to his knee. So she knew. No, no, no. I'm like, well, he ain't wet. You know, she's like, no, that's a hunger cry or no, that's not a hunger cry. So the bottle's not going to satisfy him. He's wet or, you know, so she knew exactly what his his cries were about, what the yes. need was. And she was a ready, willing and able to meet them and address them in the way that best suited my son. So believe that the God that that saved you yeah. is here, still listening to you, trust that he understands your cry and the answer will always be exactly what you need. I think uh I think that's that's the best thing that I can that I can that I can say even as an impatient person myself. <laughs> just trust and believe that he saved you. He has not walked away from you and he's still listening to you. Anything with with with, with 1 minute and and 12 seconds. <laughs> Is there anything you you guys want to add before we before we head out? Anything on your heart JD? 
Any anything you want to say that'll get you kicked out of the church before you leave? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put Jesus I'm gonna put first. a reel together one day. Put Jesus put first. Together one day with, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm put a reel with just yeah. all, all the time you say, I might get in trouble for this. I might <laughs> get in trouble for this. I'm just <laughs> uh, what I'm about you, Jay. What I know every time I say that, I know every time I say that, you know, somebody's like, What is he gonna say? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paging Ben Jones. <laughs> oh, I think I would just <laughs> I think I would just say um it's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this this spiritual walk, this journey is a process. Um yeah. take the pressure off yourself. You're not you're not responsible for the outcome. You're putting yourself in the mm -hmm. hands of the, the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit who put them tongues of fire. Um, mm -hmm. on the apostles. And to me, that was an that was that's an opportunity for us to see like the jump mm -hmm. on point. Like God wants to do amazing things in us yeah, and through us. It's a process. Walk with him. It, it's 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 gonna be challenges, mm -hmm. it's gonna be hills and valleys, but he will, he who started the work will complete it. Yes. Hey, we'll let that be the last word. Uh, we thank you for joining us here on The First Word. I am your host, Pastor Rachi Taylor. I thank Dr. J for dropping the Jews here today. And I thank Pastor JD for sharing his wisdom uh, in, in, in with us in this time. We pray that you have been blessed. Go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Have a blessed one.